Welcome back to the channel, hope everybody's doing well. And in today's video, we are taking a second look at this high voltage probe from Testec here, this one here. I have done a previous video on this probe. I will leave a link to that video in the description box below. Uh, but on that video, somebody did ask the question about using these on an oscilloscope, which I didn't demonstrate in that video, and how they perform in comparison to the more standard oscilloscope probes that we have, and in particular, some of these oscilloscope probes that are rated for higher voltages. Um, now this probe here is the Testec probe. Its part number is TTHVP40, and is capable of reading up to 28 kV AC or 40 kV DC. Um, these oscilloscope probes that are in this kind of format, and also the ones uh, these are ISO probes that I generally have. Uh, they are a much lower voltage, somewhere between 2 to 4 kV, although I think that one's 5 kV. Uh, we'll look at the spec sheet uh, when you start looking at that. And 100 to 1 probes such as these are a very good idea for your oscilloscope. They do protect the inputs, particularly if you're operating something like this Pico scope here. Uh, max input on this is plus or minus 20 volts peak to peak. So uh, quite a vulnerable input on these Pico scopes uh, to get voltages. Generally you're on a 10 to 1 probe with this, but certainly a 100 to 1 probe can be very helpful as well. And the mixing here is slightly different. That's 300 volts. Yeah, 300 volts RMS on this one. So that can take a bit more, probably more 10 to 1 probe use on that. Um, this one here is the Metrix LX5022. Uh, and this is actually a Cat 3, Cat 4 input, which is uh, 600 volts on that one. That's why I get these probes for, because these are also Cat 3, Cat 4 rated, uh, whereas these more standard looking oscilloscope probes are usually only Cat 1. So for the type of work that I do when I use this, I get more protection using the ISO probe. Um, ISO probes are available from a number of manufacturers. Uh, Stalbly do them, Yakukawa do one, and there's a couple of other companies that do them as well. You'll see them in this kind of format. And the lower voltage ones do have look more like a standard oscilloscope probe as well. The problem is, of course, is pricing. Um, these isoprobes, they will range, uh, depending on the bandwidth that you've got, uh, they are 50 to 100 pounds for a 10 to 1 and 100 to 150 pounds for a 100 to 1 probe. So these are quite pricey. Um, whereas these more standard ones, you'll pick these up off of Amazon and other manufacturers as well do them. Uh, this is an LG test one in actual fact. Uh, they're more in the range of 20 to 50 pounds you can pick these up for. Now in terms of using this on an oscilloscope, the obvious differential is the output jacks here. These are standard four millimeter designed to go into a input on a normal multimeter. Um, it does have two ratios, this particular one, which for a 10 mega ohm input for the DC is 1000 to one, and for a one mega ohm input for AC is 2000 to one. Uh, obviously our oscilloscopes are around about a one mega ohm input so with this probe will operate on a 2000 to 1 ratio. Um, we can overcome the connection with the jacks via these little adapters that we can have here, which are standard 4mm to the BNC. So that will now plug straight onto my scope. Um, there are a few differences though that we can look at with these probes. This is purely a resistive divider. It doesn't have any capacitance built into it whatsoever. Whereas a true oscilloscope probe does have capacitance built into it, and usually an adjustable one. You can see the adjustable uh, compensation there on that probe that allows you to get a true square wave out of the oscilloscope. Um, so this does not have that facility within it. So you could well end up with uh, distortion on your waveform by using this. However, that can be a good thing to note. Uh, because whilst this has true uh, ratings, the 40 kV and the 28 kV are its true ratings, these probes here, because they have a parallel capacitance in them, you usually have 
the capability curve to apply to them. Um, this particular one from LD Test, which is this one here, uh, you get a voltage frequency durating curve. I'll put a picture of this up on the screen. Um, so whilst it states it's rated at 2 kV, and this particular probe here, do we have which one it is? Let me get this one. This is 150 megahertz bandwidth on this probe, so 2 kV. Uh, but the 2 kV rating is only up to around right about 2, 3, 3.5 three megahertz on this particular probe. Uh, so for our ISO probe one there, um, again I'll put this one up probably so you can see it better. 5 kV rating, but that's only 210. Uh, 100 kilohertz is there, is it? So that's only to around probably about 50 kilohertz on this one. Um, so seriously derated as the frequency goes up, uh, that capacitor will start to conduct more. Therefore, you can't apply as much voltage to the probe because of that. Whereas this one, you can apply uh, the full rating of the voltage to the probe there. It doesn't make any difference. Um, however, I do have to say that Testec do make a probe that does have a BNC on it for connection to an oscilloscope. Uh, the Testec HVP08 reading up to 6 kV AC and 8 kV DC with a 40 megahertz bandwidth, but that retails for 380 pounds, so significantly more expensive. Um, this particular probe here, recommended retail price on this is 165 pounds, so the oscilloscope rated ones seem to be much much higher in price and indeed they do make a probe that has equivalent capability of this the TT HVP 2739 uh, that will read up to 27 kV AC 38 kV DC uh, at 50 megahertz bandwidth however that retails for £1,208 uh, you see the price for that on RS components so very very expensive if you need to go to that kind of voltage level. Uh, one of the other differences that you'll see between these probes and these small oscilloscope probes is their physical construction. Obviously this is much bigger but the tube inside this is usually a res chain of resistors. Um, you do that for you can get you better stability with the ratio uh, having a number of resistors in there also provides a, an added safety factor because it's unlikely that all the resistors will go short circuit. Uh, an individual resistor going short circuit you won't put as much voltage down and damage the equipment that this is connected to. Um, and you obviously you'll see your ratio as you, when you test the probe, the ratio will be out, so you'll know that something's happened inside here and it's gone wrong. Uh, these kind of standard oscilloscope probes, I did dismantle one. Um, this is the one from Mixig. It's basically unplugged, which I thought, yeah, 2 kV probe, I don't fancy it being able to unplug from there. Um, so I dismantled the whole lot just to see what it was like inside. And obviously we have the shroud here, that's what's keeping your fingers away from it. You are fully protected via an earth conductor here. This is an earth case sitting around, your high voltage runs through the centre of this, so uh, you shouldn't get anything flashing over into you if you were using these. And however, what did surprise me is the insides of this actually pull clean out. Um, this is the connector that goes onto the lead. And you just pull this out and chuck it around. Um, and this is what's inside these, uh, these two bits of insulation. Just a bit of tubing. Maybe half a mil tubing on that. Uh, uh, half, a, half a mil uh, wall thickness I should say. And then again, similar sort of bit that goes over the actual lead. That runs up inside that and I'm surprised that this doesn't appear to be crimped to that pin. Now whether I've got a faulty probe or not I don't know but that did surprise me. Um, but inside here we have our resistance and our parallel capacitance um, sat inside there. So just a single resistor so if something does go wrong with this then potentially whatever you're measuring the full voltage of that can be flashed straight over straight into your instrument. Um, so it's just to be aware of that really obviously you decide you make the choice yourself as to what you want to use and what dangers you expose your equipment to. So yeah these probes here don't fill me with the best of confidence for dealing with high voltages. 
Um, and I've, I don't actually use these probes up to that kind of voltage. These stay around about the 400, 500 volt mark. Okay, so what we've got here is our insulation tester. And we're wired onto the test it probe here. You can see the connections down at the bottom there. Our insulation tester is this one from Fluke. Over here, this is a 2.5 kV tester, uh, one of the new ones that I'm playing with. And we have set our oscilloscope up to single shot mode, and that's going to record the startup pulse from this insulation tester at 2.5 kV. And we'll see, and there you get our probe there, the measurement that's been made. That's the startup signal from the Fluke, uh, which one is it? It's 1537 that I'm using. Um, and we've got a measurement of 2.88 kV there. Uh, so what we'll do is swap this around and put this onto uh, the LD test probe and see how we get on with that. What I will just do is save this. Okay, so we've reset a few things. We've saved our waveform from test tech probe up here, 2.88 kV there. We've set the probe now onto channel three for the 100 to one times probe that you can see connected up just there. Same 2.5 kV test. And we hit the go button on this. And there's our waveform that we see there. Turn it off so I don't zap myself. And we've got a reading of 2.72 kV on that one. Um, so, see, uh, so our output voltage is 2.621 volts. I'm not sure how well. Oh, you can see that 2622 volts uh, on the insulation tester itself. And we got uh, 2.72 on the 101 probe and uh, 2.88 on the 1001 Pro, so that's slightly better uh, reading on the 101 Pro there. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll put this up on the screen uh, so you can get a better view of it without the reflection of the camera in there. And you can see there's perhaps a little bit more interference on your R2 than there is on the uh, 101 Pro there. But there's not that much in it. That's the uh, output that I've had from that. You get a fairly acceptable result using the Testec uh, 2000 to 1 probe uh, against the 100 to 1 probe there. Um, I think you get a little bit better response from the 100 to 1. Um, but if you haven't got one of those and you've got the probe from Testec, although it's designed for multimeters, it looks like it will work on these oscilloscope. So uh, that'll be it for this video. Hope you found it useful. Uh, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you again in the next one.